for coming to my seminar, um, Are You Fit For Your Business? And I was going to have music playing in the background, but I decided I was having technology overload, and <laughs> so I decided to just chill it down and be myself. So you've got me for 45 minutes. Um, as a business, we are Equilibrium Personal Fitness Training, and our core business is one-to-one -one fitness training. We also do small group training. We also do corporate fitness training, so we can kind of do corporate wellbeing solutions. But we have a number of mantras, and one of our mantras is aspire, apply, achieve. If you share your aspirations with us, we can help you apply yourself to achieve the results you want. And today, the result that I want you to aspire to and have some application to so you can enable yourself to achieve is a little bit more um, thought about your work-life balance. Um, are you fit for your business actually is, are you fit for your life, are you fit for your home, are you fit for your everything? So um, it's in the widest context of, of possible. Come on in Susie. Sorry. That's alright. Um, come and make yourself comfy. Just welcoming everybody. So, I talk a lot anyway, so anybody that knows me knows I'm not sure for, for words. But today, hang on, she says, I did this at home and it worked. <laughs> so, Today I have two aims from this workshop. I want to identify your work-life stressors and I want to inspire you to become more physically active. I am going to assume that none of you do any fitness. That's probably the easiest thing to assume. You're probably I'm, right, Tim. Yeah. Are you yeah, like yeah. That? <laughs> I want interaction as well. That would be absolutely fantastic. I'm pretty good at giving back as, as well as I get. So don't worry about phasing me. No, if I go, <laughs> welcome. That's fine. You might get an apple thrown at you. you know? that's, that's one thing to consider. <laughs> okay. If I'd had my music playing... Oh, wrong button. So, if I'd had my music playing... I would have had some music plan that says, If I was a punk rocker with flowers in my hair, in 77 and 69 revolution was in the air. Who needs music, hey? Eh? <laughs> well, that was my music as you came in. I know, what have you come to? This is a serious <laughs> business <laughs> seminar in a business expo. Hey, we'll let anything you know. We'll goes. let you know. Let you know. Yeah. <laughs> Feedback at the end would be great. I haven't spoken for 45 minutes in a public forum before. Whether I will after today is down to you, the good audience. Times have changed. Um, we have a good cross-section of ages and generations here. Many of us will have grown up without car, with parents that did manual work, with mums that were stay-at-home mums because that was what mums did. But mums didn't just stay at home, they did the washing in a twin tub with a ringer. They did um, top to bottom house cleaning every day. Why? But they did. They used to clean fire grates. The dads, a lot of them went out to work, not around here so much, in the mines, but they were more manual. There was a lot more milkmen, there was a lot more um, trade business. So life was generally more active. And as a generation, we, a lot of us grew into that, but as our parents and their parents became more affluent as, as technology came along, things changed. Things change for the better on one level, and a lot of you have got fancy kit. I've got fancy kit. You know what? Brilliant fancy kit. But some of the fancy kit has actually been at a detriment to our well-being, and that's not good. So I want you to think about you in this today. You, your business, your employees, um, the people that you care about, but you primarily. So times have changed. A um, few questions for you. Don't have to have a show of hands. Who finds that they lack energy, they sleep too long, they don't sleep enough, they wake up halfway through the night in hot and cold sweats, um, they're irritable for no good reason, they're relying on caffeine or alcohol to get them out of those boosts and lit lulls, they've got no time for themselves, um, they have poor concentration, um, you make silly mistakes, yeah, I'm seeing quite a lot of ooh, yeah, hands and... Speaking to my wife. <laughs> yeah. We're very good working with stressed executives, that's one thing we're very good at. Um, life is all about balance, you can't call yourself a business called equilibrium and not advocate balance. Life is all about balance. But if you recognise any of those stressors, then that's an indicator that something's not quite right. So if you want to be the optimum in business and the optimum in your family life, then you need to think about addressing those issues that are causing you serious stress. Now. Stress is how we react to a situation. And stress back in the day when woolly mammoths roamed the earth was quite normal. Me go out to hunt, oh, sodding great woolly mammoth, me gonna run, adrenaline would fly, 
You'd run like nobody's business. You'd escape the woolly mammoth. You might turn around and spear him and get dinner at the same time. Come home to wife who you're dragging with the hair, apparently. And you'd be, you'd be cool. But your adrenaline would have settled and all calm would have come back. We now live in a heightened sense of adrenaline. Adrenaline is supposed to release, you're supposed to escape the situation. Nor adrenaline comes back in to calm you down. You know, that's what life's about. And it's, oh, ah, it's up and down. That's all quite spontaneous. I wasn't doing that originally. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know, life is a roller coaster, and it's not a Ronan Keenan roller coaster. It's a roller coaster that we hold on to at the bottom and just hope that we're still holding one at the end. We need to be kind to ourselves. We need to actually let the roller coaster slow down and step off every now and then. But you need to step off more than you need to stay on it. So. I've done the question, so I've bumped that. Inactivity kills as many as smoking. Who was inspired this summer by 2012 London yeah. Olympics and Paralympics and that? Oh, I've got my games make a shoes on. <laughs> games make shoes in video. Um, it was a huge summer, absolutely phenomenal summer, probably the best summer in the world. They're pretty supply, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, on the eve of London 2012, Everywhere across the media, inactivity kills as many as smoking. The Lancet decided to do shock tactics. Deaths associated with inactivity are at the same level as deaths associated with smoking illnesses. That cannot be good. Inactivity, sadly, leads to things called NCDs, a little bit of jargon, which are non-communicable diseases. Your osteoporosis, your obesity, your chronic lung disorders, heart diseases, heart attacks little brown space in the ground, you know, the long-term things. Smoking leads to your cancers. Strangely enough, some of the inactivity ultimately leads to the cancers because the stress comes in. Stress is one of the biggest diseases that can cause cancer. It's not a good picture, not a good picture to, to have. But you can do something about it. There's studies out there in Japan, very 80s. There's a word that says karoshi, K-A-R-O-S-H-I. Anybody want to stab a guess at what that means? It means death by overwork. And in Japan, according to this study, this may be quite dated, but hey, the figures are good for today, there are 10,000 deaths a year associated with death by overwork. That's shocking, really, isn't it? Death by overwork. Now, that's not, oh, I've had a really hard day, I've had to dig a hole, and I've had to fill the hole, and I've had to dig the hole again. That's the constant, relentless, uh, over and over and over, and stress, and give me coffee, and stress, and the kids and the dinner and the man at home, the wife at home, the, oh, the stress, the dark deadlines. It's that constant, constant, constant. It's playing havoc with our adrenal <coughs> glands. Our adrenal glands sit here and they produce the adrenaline and the noradrenaline. They're the size of walnuts. You know, if you overstress them too long, you could end up with something called adrenal fatigue, which is another 21st century disease, which basically means all those symptoms I gave you earlier are indicators of adrenal fatigue. Not a good picture. Not a good picture. So inactivity kills. So what am I asking you today? I'm not asking you to be Olympic athletes. I'm asking you to think about what you do that replaces the stuff that we did as kids. The stuff where we wanted to go to school and we had to walk to school. The stuff where we had an after school club, if they existed, we walked there. We had to do the shopping, we walked there. We went and got a pint of milk, we walked there. Mum and Dad took us out for the day. Oh, that might be a treat, we might go in the car, but once we got there, we tore around, and the parents tore around. So I want you to think about that. We've lost that, so what I want you to think about is how you replace it. And if you're not even doing 20 to 30 minutes of activity on a daily basis, as in get up, get down, get up, get down, stuck at a desk all day, stuck behind a shop counter all day, stuck on a phone all day, stuck behind a camera all day, you know, whatever you're doing, if you're not doing something that's away from that, that's not stressful and actually involves movement, you are going to end up dead a lot sooner. There's no two ways about it. Inactivity kills. You can add about 14 to 20 years onto your life by bringing in 20 to 30 minutes of daily activity. And that's just daily activity to keep your heart healthy. If you want to be the next best, next best thing since sliced bread and you want a six pack and you want to go into competitions or you 
fancy running half marathons really well, that's a whole other subject, that's, that's a different training plan. I want you to think about saving your lives and saving your lives so that you're better in your business for your kids, for your partners, for your employees and for your employers and go back <coughs> to the basics. It's about 20 to 30 minutes. So the combination of inactivity with stress, the combination is fatal. So I've just got a few little stress tests. This, these are completely personal. Whiz down through, you can tick them or you can just acknowledge um, how, how um, if, if, it, if it's you. you don't, this is just for your reference. I don't need you to share it with anybody. But basically it says at the top, the more you can tick, the more stressed you are. Let me know when you've all done that, that would be brilliant. It's a reflex answer. Don't think about it too much, whatever your reflex answer is. Everybody there? Did anybody not tick any? So everybody's ticked at least one. I don't need to know how many you've ticked, but my thing at the top says the more you tick, the more stressed you are. Actually, the more stress you're putting yourself under and how you manage that stress response is down to you, the individual. The long-term effects of these can be fatal. You know, there's no two ways about it. The um, stress illness industry costs the economy 3.7 billion annually for stress-related illnesses. And that's from HSC studies, it's out there. It's bigger businesses, so it's more obvious in bigger businesses because bigger businesses have a structure to allow people to take sick time and get full of heart pay. Everybody in this room, I'm pretty sure, is self-employed in some way or form, I'm pretty sure that's either run their own business or something like that's a big sweeping statement. We don't have the luxury of long-term sick plans that are paid for by the big boss, you know, because we are the big boss. We pull ourselves out of bed on days where you normally go, oh, actually, I really need to stay in bed. We don't have that luxury, but we have to find the time to, to <coughs> carve out at least 20 to 30 minutes to keep our hearts healthy and to keep our stress management levels as low as possible. So. What I'm going to ask you, so what's the magic formula? This is what you're here for. I can talk about all the other things until the cows come home. Do you think I've got a magic formula? Do you think I've got a magic formula? Yes. Yes? Well, well, I think I've got a really one way straight up. I'm here to shock. <laughs> there isn't actually one magic formula that fits everybody. I wish there was. But I've got something that might help. Five pence piece. Something I'm calling, or we're calling, the five P's. It's as simple as that. If you hunt in your purse, or your wallet, or your, or your pocket, and see if you have a five pence piece. Don't, I haven't got enough to give out, because I wasn't sure if I was going to have a million here, or, or 23, or five, so I was going to be tight. Um, <laughs> a million five P's, I'd be very wealthy. Wouldn't necessarily need to be standing here, would I? So. <laughs> Actually, I would. Um, if you've got five P's, all I want for you to do is carry a five P. I'm serious. Five P's. Anybody got your five P now? Find a five P. Oh, I've got one spare. I've got one spare. Five P. Five P. No, five P. Five P. Can I have your one? That's my one IFA man. <laughs> Tightwad. This is going to look really good on YouTube, isn't it? Who's I've called you a tightwad on the one of my spares. You've got a spare. Janice will share her 5p. Has everybody got some sort of 5p? No. Ideally, if you haven't got a 5p, imagine it's a 5p. I just want you to remember 5p today. What, and in fact, let's go back to times of change before I go on. What could you get for 5p when you were a kid? Back you, well, you could get the world, couldn't you? You could get the world for 5p. How cool is that? I'm giving you the world back in 5p. I am seriously, today, giving you the world back in 5p. But... It needs you to engage 
and want to make the 5P work for you. So these 5Ps, they're going to be your lucky charms. Put them in your purse, put them in your bag, whatever you take out with you every day. I want 5P on you because I want you to rub your 5P, wherever your 5P is. <laughs> and remember, 5P, the first two Ps, it's about personal responsibility and that procrastination is out. Anybody that went to an event last week, I ran a phrase last week, procrastination kills. I decided to not put that on there, but I thought I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> but procrastination does kill. There's no two ways about it. You've got to take personal responsibility and throw the procrastination out. Because if you don't, you know that little hole in the ground? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you're going to be in there a lot quicker. So the time that you procrastinate is over. You have to decide that you the person are worth spending the time on for your business, for your life, for your family, for your friends. If you don't want to live to your 90, that's cool, but surely you want to live as healthily and wealthily and happily for as long as possible until you think, oh, I've had enough now, I'm going to just roll over. But don't roll over today because there's, there's this huge little world out there that's very, very small and it's a very small period of time you're there as well. So... Think about how important you are. That's the first two Ps. Personal responsibility and procrastination out. Plan. I'm not going to ask you to set SMART goals. Who, who's heard of SMART? Everybody? Yeah. SMART works, but I'm not going to ask you to set SMART goals. But I want you to plan. Because if you don't take personal responsibility and stop procrastinating by actually following through with the plan, you're not going to get anywhere. So the plan that I'm asking you to consider today is your well-being in amongst everything else that goes on. And I'm going to reiterate back to 20 to 30 minutes of physical activity to keep your heart healthy. But to achieve that, you might have to look at everything in your life to achieve that. One of the things I want you to consider is delegate your stresses. If you're in business and if you're a sole trader or a partnership or a small business that thinks that... You can't afford to delegate out some of those stresses that are causing you to be in a heightened state of stress all the time, then you're getting closer to your grave by looking at the very short term view. It's scary to think of the bigger picture and speculate to accumulate, but if you are doing things that you know really fill you with dread, investigate and delegate and hand tasks over. I know some people have recently enrolled services of an, a virtual assistant to relieve some, in fact, allow that person to function better. I know people that have brought in um, external print houses to take over their print management and so they can actually communicate. I know people that have asked people to source products for them. You know, it's things that you think, oh, I can't afford to do this, but actually you, you can. You know, you've got to look at what your business objectives are and whether you're a one-man band or you're an, or you're an MD of a a multi-million pound company, you've got to use the foot soldiers around you and, and ask for help. And whether that's a support network or whether that's paid help, you've got to find what works for you. And if you put it out there that you're looking for some support and you haven't got a big budget, I'm sure there's ways and ways for people to offer that support. And in a lot of small businesses, collaboration and um, contra business works really well. So people are out there and willing to help each other because people want to raise each other's profiles and support each other. So plan and get those stresses delegated. You also have to prioritise. We're at four Ps now. You have to be more active. You have to find things that relieve that stress in your life. And today I'm asking you to be more active. It's as simple as that. You know, that pile of paperwork can wait. But you have to be in the moment also. That's a really key thing. You have to be in the moment. So even if you're fantastic at multitasking, that's awesome. But be in the moment of whatever task you're dealing with and then know that you've drawn a line under it and moved on. Whether that's a business task or a personal task, be in the moment. When the child is screeching at you because they want their tea and you're still trying to send emails, that's my life, then you've got to go, actually, child, beautiful kid, you need 10 minutes for your tea. I'm going to sit with you, we're going to do it. And then you can go back. That's the joys of running a business for yourself. You have to listen and be in the moment. Being in the moment and prioritising whatever you're doing will be a stress reliever. Whatever that is, whether that's business, you know, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have it. You shouldn't have access to things all the time. Think about recovery breaks. Um, think about, if you're in an office environment, encouraging everyone to have recovery breaks. And that's not your lunch break. That's a proper, right... 
the equivalent of a ciggy break. You know, isn't it unfair that the smokers get ciggy breaks in these offices where the people that are really healthy, if you get up and I'm going for a walk for five minutes, but no, actually, I'm sorry, but you're not smoking. It's unfair. You know, that's, I think that's actually, what's the term? Um, where they... Discrimination. It's, discrimination. It's, yeah, it's discrimination. You know, we've got to make a space for smokers, but we don't have to make a space for the people that want to go out for a walk for five minutes. Hey, flip it on its head. If you're a smoker, you don't get a break. You prove to me you can go out for a walk and leave your ciggies behind. I'll support the work-life environment to make your work life better. Be a proactive rather than a reactive employer. Um, they're all things about maintaining good health. But you also have to proceed. It's great to get, take personal responsibility, stop procrastinating and plan and delegate and prioritise and do things in theory. But you have to proceed. You have to take action to address the imbalances because if you don't address the imbalances, you will not achieve homeostasis, which is the most important thing, which basically means balance. And we're here for a very, very short period of time and we want life in balance. We have wonky wheels, we have flat wheels. You need to pump them back up, take action, address the imbalances and get back on that bike in a smooth, smooth and happy way. Um, I have a short film to show you. 23 and a half hours. Has anybody seen that? No. Okay, I'm going to come out. I'm going to come out, hopefully. It's going to work. <coughs> Right. Does it feel like you say? Oh, okay. no, 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 no. How do I come out? Exit. <laughs> End show. Oh, oh, stress. Oh, yes. <laughs> Technology is brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> right. This is American guy, so mm -hmm. I apologise for it being American, but it's brilliant. I absolutely, I couldn't put this better myself, and I wish I'd actually done it. Um, but I didn't. He's had two and a half million hits on this. And I've just got to work out how to get into it. I don't want to copy. I want to play. Ooh, what's that? Play. Is it coming? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'm not playing 23 and a half hours. Okay, I don't know how to get that up. I thought I'd worked out how to get that up. Okay, 23 and a half hours. American doctor. He asks, what is the single most important mm -hmm. Thing we can do for our health. Any ideas? No, don't worry. It's on YouTube, so I don't know if I can actually. Oh, sure. it's coming back. So, no, no. Um, it doesn't matter. I can. I'm a professional. <laughs> I'll get my present. Something making a very strange noise though. Okay. Right. He asked, what is the single most important thing we can do for our health? Based on what I've been talking to you about today, what do you think that single most important thing is? Um, any ideas? Balance. Balance? It's actually exercise. Exercise is the single most important thing that we can do for our health. And I will, if you give me all your details, I will send you the link to 23 and a half hours. I'm going to put it on Facebook as well, because I'm going to put it up there afterwards. Basically, um, it's a fantastic cartoon drawing that talks about all the things that I'm talking about, keeping work and life in balance. And exercise has been found to be the perfect medicine because it reduces um, strokes by 47%, it reduces heart disease by 54%. He's got all the stats, and it's all done in this fabulous visual comic strip way with this American twang. But the message is, you cannot afford to be inactive. You've got 24 hours in a day. 24! Which is why we were going to go to the next one. Let me just go back to I asked the question about the magic formula, blah, 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 blah. 23 and a half hours. Magic green clock. It's not a magic green clock. Your 5P's magic. Remember that? What's your 5P for? It's 5P's. It's magic. 23 and a half hours. It's 24 hours in the day. It's magic. Not a lot of people know that. If you cannot afford to designate half an hour, 30 minutes from every 24 hour period to your own personal well-being by walking, and that's all he talks about. This study that he's, he talks about and has done this beautiful cartoon about is the most effective medicine is walking. I'm not asking anybody to be an Olympic athlete. 
or a top swim person or a top this. I'm asking you to leave the car at home and give yourself half an hour of quality time to keep everything else in balance. So some of you did see my next slide. So moving on, we're going to talk about some strategies. Basically, you want to make the most of your life. So, we're going to start back from the beginning. <clears throat> Walk more, 20 to 30 minutes every day. Who can find that for me? You know, it's not in one hit. Six times five. You know, you're five times table. You know, you're four times table. Four times five. One times 30. You know, it's got to happen. Make the time. If you have school runs, if you have drop-offs of any sort, if you have to take something somewhere, schedule in that extra time to allow you to walk to do it. If it's as simple as walking up and getting a pint of milk or a bottle of fizzy water three times a day, do it. If you need a purpose to do it, find a purpose as part of your five P's of your planning and your proceeding and your no procrastination and your personal responsibility. Make a purpose for your walk. It doesn't have to be to be a marathon walk runner. It has to be a purpose to <coughs> keep your heart healthy. Gadgets! Who has the phone on 24-7 right by their bed? Do they use it as an alarm for... Oh, you're stupid. Right, sorry, this is not going to look good on YouTube, is it? Stupid, stupid, stupid. And we're all stupid. Because we are in a society where technology has gone full circle and it's, we have to be there 24-7. Does it really matter if we don't reply to that email or that Twitter tweet or that Facebook status update? at one o'clock in the morning before we go to it. Don't get me wrong, I've done it. <laughs> Not saying that I don't, but our phones stay off downstairs. We have an old fashioned alarm clock that goes ding a ling a ling at the morning. Some people need one of those loomy look clocks that, oh, the sunrise, Hannah's got a loomy clock. <laughs> a little bit more gentle, it makes you happy. You've got to do things that make you happy and turning off your electronic devices is simply one of the most important things you can do. Apart from all the whole thing about electromagnetic radar waves and, oh, I'm a Dalek, you know, forget that. It's the accessibility. Turn your laptops off, turn your phones off, <coughs> don't let them ping. That's the single most important thing you can do after walking for 20 to 30 minutes. To achieve that extra 20 to 30 minutes, go to bed half an hour earlier. It's not rocket science. I didn't claim to come here today to reinvent the wheel or set, get Neil Armstrong on the moon. It's go to bed half an hour earlier to allow you to get up half an hour earlier to allow you to achieve the healthy heart to allow you to live longer. These messages hopefully are bedding in. Work related, home life related, all related. Take actions on issues and situations that distress and outsource if necessary. That's just reiterating the whole thing about delegating and planning. If you continue to procrastinate about a situation that's causing you a distress and a stress, then you are the biggest fool in the world because you are the person that can take responsibility, personal responsibility for your procrastination to iron out those situations. It may not be easy. You may need to enlist support. You may need to enlist help. But if you don't ask and you don't put it out there, you're not going to change. You have to be, make you a priority. And whether that's going and buying a new pair of trainers in wherever direct on half price offer so that you can go for a walk comfortably because your shiny shoes are a little bit high or a little bit too leathery, you've got to do it. Make that change. Taking that step further, if you do want to do more than keep your heart healthy, think about rekindling a childhood hobby or activity. Now, yeah, we all tour around on bikes. We were filthy. We came back mud in our hair, I wish I was a punk rocker with flowers in my hair, back to that. We had a different world, and yes, it is a different world, but I think as adults and parents, we perhaps are a little bit oversensitive, and as a gen the next generation who may have um, kids and become parents, we have to let them have a bit, you know, and we have to be like them. You know, when was the last time you came home muddy and filthy and laughing, unless you've been to my boot camp on a Saturday, of course, because then you will. But basically, find something that makes you smile. Don't try and do something that you hate anyway, because you're never going to keep it up. It's about sustaining a change to keep equilibrium, homeostasis, balance in your life. And if that's something from the past that you think, oh, right, I'll go with that. I tried netball when I was about 21. I was really good at netball when I was a kid. I was absolutely shocking. I can't do the lateral movements now as an adult because I'm scared of going sideways. But hey, I tried. But I found, for me, running and things like that. You don't have to be a runner. It could be that you do Zumba. It could be that you do Pilates. It could be that you do stamp collecting and tour the country on your bike to collect stamps. Because you're getting pushed bike, I'm saying. Or you're 
big Harley Davidson, whatever it is, you know, there's no, there's no wrong. Find something that makes you smile and then it's easier to find at least 20 or 30 minutes to make your heart happy. Nutrition and hydration, I could talk to you for hours on that. There are so many different things out there, so many different theories. And all I'm going to say is be kind. It's an expression that I use a lot. If you're not kind to yourself, then nobody's going to be kind to you. And, and that's kind in general. But in terms of your nut nutrition and hydration, avoid processed foods, as in anything that's pre-made from a shop or takeaways. Um, cut the, the, the high sugar foods out. Keep them to a minimum. I believe in 80-20, you know, I'm never going to be stick thin. I don't encourage people to be sort of like so skinny that it's unhealthy because you've got to have muscle and you've got to have a bit of fat on you because of bone density and so on and so forth. But three meals a day, have a breakfast. If you have a breakfast on the run, that's fine. Grab an apple again, Hannah. Okay? <laughs> Do things that work for you. Shoving a few apples in your bag isn't hard. Shoving some fruit on the side at work, a few crisp breads, have a bit of smoked salmon, whatever rocks your boat. A good breakfast, a sensible lunch, a sensible dinner, a bit of healthy snack in between. Lots of fruit and vegetables. They contain a huge amount of water because everyone just don't like to drink water. Well, eat it! You know, fruit and vegetables are 80% water. Eat it! Make that part of your daily life and then it will be easy. But again, there's, all, there's strategies for fat loss, there's strategies for this, there's strategies for that. I want strategies for a healthy heart and homeostasis and happy people. So eat three meals a day, have a treat every now and then, be active. All of those things together will keep your heart healthy and make you fit for your business, hopefully. My conclusion today is that exercise is simply one of the most effective tools to help combat your work-life stresses and to keep you fit for business. Hopefully, my inane utterings will inspire you to all go out for a walk today at least. Even if it's not after today, go for a walk today and go, yeah, I did it, and stick it on my Facebook page and stick it on my Twitter account and say, I've walked for it today, I've done it. I haven't done that for a long while. And if you are already active and do red structured fitness every week and then you go to classes, that's brilliant but it doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing the 20 to 30 minutes because those structured classes are replicating some of the things that we did when we were kids and replacing that activity from the 50s, the 60s, 70s and the 80s. The 90s and the noughties, um, there was a statistic I read in the last 24 hours, I think, that I think in America, 25% of children are obese before they reach the age of 10. You know, that's shocking. That's the next generation. If we don't get it right by being good role models to the next generation, whether we've got kids or whether we're around kids, the next generation are going to be even more sedentary. And we're going to be costing the NHS, which is the dying service, even more. We're going to be costing other agencies a lot more. It's about personal responsibility. So hopefully, I've inspired you. I'm going to go back a couple of slides. I'm not, I'm going out of it. <laughs> I'm going to do my five P's. My five P's. Can we remember? What's the first one? Personal, Personal responsibility. Number two procrastination. is... Procrastination. Procrastination kills, so get it out. Number three is... Plan. Plan. Number four is... Prioritise. And number five is... Proceed. I've got my message across. Put your magic five P's in your pockets. Rub those five P's whenever you're feeling a bit sad and actually do it. Thank you for your time and thank you for engaging with me. Thank you. Questions, please do come up and grab me. And I do believe that next door there's, I'm going to say, free wine and canapes at the Ashbourne Insurance <laughs> lunch. So grab an apple, take your pads, the pads are from Smart Inc. that do our printing and pens. And if we can help, give me a shout. We'd like to help. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 23 and a half hours is on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah, if you go, if you go on YouTube, 23.5 hours. 23 um, his, his name is Dr. Mike Evans. It's brilliant. Mike, Mike Evans. It's absolutely fantastic. Hello. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's nine minutes long, which would have taken me over anyway, but I... It's a brilliant, brilliant video. It make, makes me smile a lot. And I, I wanted to have done it, you know, but he's had two million views, so I can't steal the idea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And please do...
give feedback to Louise and, and Rachel if you thought it was brilliant or crap, be honest. It was brilliant. You can tell me it's brilliant. You can tell me it's crap if you think it is. So. No, it's all right. Thank you. Well done. It was a bit